Okay, I'm going to uh, set up an EC2 instance. Uh, this is for the Frequent Trade app. Um, the first thing is that this needs to be set up in the uh, in Asia Pacific area. So, I'm going to just create one here in uh, Seoul, Korea. Um, let's see here. We're going to launch. Let's see, go to EC2. Uh, launch instance. Going to name this uh, Freak Trade Web Server. Create a new key pair. Um, let's see here, I'll name this King. Oh, let's see here, actually, Kimchi King. Soul. And then we'll make this an RSA and create a key pair. Save it to my downloads folder. Um, and then I'm going to leave everything else the same and launch instance. Okay, view all instances. Okay, here's the new server. It's uh, pending. Refresh. Still pending. Um, I am going to open up, let's see here, let me open up another Kali window. Terminal. I'm going to copy over copy over that pem file. Uh, going to go to WSL Kali Linux home and placed it here. Then I will SSH. Let's see. Uh, you can see that it's uh, located here now. Permissions are not correct, uh, correct here, so I'm going to do um, uh, change mod 400 kimchi king soul. Then I am going to see SSH using that. Uh, and EC2 user at going to grab this public IP address, paste it here. Yes, and I should get into the instance. Next step, I am going to uh, update. So I'm going to do a sudo yum update. I am now going to do an install of git. And then a install of docker. <laughs> then start docker. Switch to root. I have a project with this uh, Freak Trade app. That's the location. I'm going to clone it. I am going to switch the directory cd to change over to home ec2 user sees a414 week one application. And I am going to, um, if 
if you look, there's actually, uh, let's see here, there is a setup that I'm going to sort source. So I'm going to source that setup. And then I am going to run download history sh. This is going to go to Binance and pull down a bunch of future trading um, data, historical data. And I'm going to perform a back test of a strategy and the MO strategy. Okay, and looks like this worked. Yep, there we go. I'm going to um, download Docker Compose. Okay, and I'm going to uh, sudo change mod uh, to execute Docker Compose. going to check the version. Looks like we're at version 2.14. 2 uh, I am going to move Docker Compose from local bin to um, user bin Docker Compose. Okay. And then I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to run a make start. Okay, looks like that I ended up creating the container. Starting it, Docker container. Um, here we can see, run Docker command to see what processes are running. Uh, this is running on 8030. And um, you can do make logs to look at logs. Okay, I'm gonna cancel that. Now, what I'm going to do here is need to open up a firewall port. So let's go ahead and go into this instance, go to security, um, go into security groups, edit inbound rules, add a rule, create a custom TCP and note that we, when we started this up, it was actually going to 8030. So we need to open port 8030. Uh, we'll just make that open anywhere and save the rules. Okay, and if we go back to that instance, take that public address and go to port 8030. Uh, here is the frequent trade app. Um, one thing we want to do is log in. Uh, let's create, I guess that Elmo bot uh, trader and then log into the password. Okay, and we'll see that we have a new, new bot here. You can see the dashboard. Um, let's see here. And if we want to take the logs that come out of Docker, um, what we can do is uh, pipe this out, where instead when we do make logs, we can do this uh, push to this var log, Elmo log. And we can do that for a little bit. Let it capture some data. Okay, we are back here uh, at our terminal for the instance that we created. Uh, control C to get out of the, uh, the logging that was happening there. Um, we're going to add a Splunk universal forwarder and we're going to forward all of this over to the Splunk server that I created earlier. So let me exit out of here. Let me make sure I'm in the root or not in the root, but in the user directory. I am going to get the Splunk forwarder. 
uh, the RPM package. I'm going to install that RPM package. So sudo yum install and then that Splunk forwarder package. Then I am going to switch over to that bin directory. Um, let me finish this. And the bin directory is in this CDOPT Splunk forwarder bin directory. And I am going to start the forwarder, uh, accepting the license automatically and answering yes. Uh, enter administrator username. If you just enter, it'll choose the default admin password. I'll just set as password for demo purposes here. And then um, I will add a line to actually do the forwarding. So this will do Splunk, add forward, and it'll forward to that other server where it's listening on port uh, 9997. Uh, you will have to add uh, username and password. Okay. So now we have added forwarding to that server. Um, I am going to now add a monitor. So Splunk add monitor and to that log file that's uh, I was generating beforehand. And I will restart this. So restart that forwarder so it can kind of take that, take any of those changes. Now on a browser, I'm going to go back to that um, Splunk. Um, let me just log out of here just to show you. So this is the the Splunk um, page where uh, the, the server that I set up. This uh, the enterprise server. Uh, log in and from here um, I will go to search go to data summary and you should see here um, that other server so let me see here's the instance and you can see that this is 172.31.42.116. Um, now, 172.31.42.16, this is the new new um, forwarder that was set up here. So I'm going to now select that. And here's all these those uh, Elmo logs, um, or at least the, the contents of the Elmo log. Um, so, Initial search here. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of make some basic reports, I suppose. Um, let's see here. I will do a filter, for example, like on a, a source type, and then equal Elmo uh, type. Elmo. There we go. And do a search. So it will find everything that's in that file, and then Elmo. Um, Let's see, I can do this where I try to get all of the stats, uh, count by source type, and it provides me, you know, there's 145 records, which you kind of already can see there. Um, I can extract new fields. So what I can do is kind of go back, data summary, Select this this one again, and you get this option where you can extract new fields. So I'll do that. And here, um, I can select uh, maybe this field here. So now you'll see that it's uh, you know this this record here. You can do next uh, delimiters next and. I can uh, parse this out depending on what kind of delimiter there is, and, and there's a lot of spaces here, so I can actually uh, parse everything out depending on that space. And I can get a couple of fields here, and the fields that I can grab would be path, for example, and this field, which would be a status code that comes back 
uh, HTTP 200. Um, and then hit next here, create a report, name this report, OMO. Hit finish. It already exists, so let me create a new one and just do AMO one. Finish. Okay, success. So let's put the fields I just created in search. Okay. Um, I can run that same same kind of search maybe and then um, do the same kind of stats by count or by path this time so it gives you all the various types of paths that you have and from here you can do some visualization and you can see how it's broken everything out right it's kind of a neat way to kind of create a, a quick report uh, you can turn this into a dashboard, and the way to do that would be you save as a new dashboard. Uh, save this as Elmo description. You can provide one if you want to. Let's do dashboard studio grid. Um, leave it as a pie. Save the dashboard, view dashboard. And there you go. Uh, created this kind of fancy dashboard. You can kind of see what is kind of broken up here. Um, and if you want to, you can even uh, download a PDF. And then let me just download that. And you can open that and take a look at it. All it is is pretty much just what was uh, displayed. Okay, uh, I think that's about it. So this is kind of creating that uh, frequent trading app, um, creating a forwarder, and being able then to pull that data and create a report and then ultimately a dashboard that you can kind of, um, if you go here to dashboards, you can keep going into the same pre kind of constructed, pre constructed uh, dashboard that you made.